Hey guys, it's John P from Geek Beat. You know, I've been talking to you guys about the solar projects I've had going out the house. So today's episode of Geek Beat is all about construction updates. Welcome to the show. This episode of Geek Beat TV is brought to you by Netflix. Okay guys, you've seen Occasionally you've seen images of my house, especially when we were doing a lot of remodeling construction. This is the last phase of what we've been doing here at the house. We are making a man cave. Uh, so what, we're, what you're looking at is the remnants of what used to be the garage and the new portion of the garage. So if we come over here, you can see that our house is an old kind of 1960s funky house. We've modernized it entirely on the inside. But one of the challenges you have is the brick. This brick is like 50 years old, so we can't exactly match it. Now, it used to be that this was a solid wall here, and we had a garage, just a two-car garage, but we wanted to have a much, much larger garage and a workspace for all that welding and other stuff that we're doing. And so what we had to do was we had to disassemble this wall and save all the bricks. So you see just all this massive mounds of brick, okay? What we're doing is you, you can see there's a new opening for a big, big garage door. This is an eight foot high garage door that's like 18 feet wide. So that's gonna be a big double door. And then beside it is another single door. This is gonna be about a three and a half car garage um, opening. So uh, Dave's gonna try and follow me into the garage without dying while walking over all this uh, crazy stuff here. But let's come on in here and take a look. There's some really fun things about this construction. I know this is like not HGTV, but it's fun anyway. So let's take a look. If you notice right here, up above these garage doors, there's this massive beam. This is 32 feet long. They put it here so that there would never be any chance of sagging from these doors. That is a massive, massive beam. It's called a header beam. A header beam, great. Okay, we've got more of those. An even bigger one, look at this one up here. It's literally two feet tall and it runs the entire expanse of the garage. This thing maintains all the weight for the entire ceiling in here with a few others that kind of come across uh, this way. So we've got 1,100 square feet of garage in here under roof and there'll be nothing in the middle. So that's very important, especially because later I'm gonna show you up above us one giant open storage area, which I really wanted. Now, let me show you a few of the cool features that we're putting in here. First of all, we are putting so much power equipment in here that we had to have new breakers. The entire home was rewired originally. So we've got these two massive uh, circuit breaker uh, panels, and you can see how much spare space there is, although a lot of this is gonna be taken up with new stuff. Also, right here on the wall, you can see there's a big square. It says inverter. Well, remember, we're really primarily going to give you an update on the solar project, which is up on the roof. We'll get to that in a minute. But they're going to put a gigantic inverter right here on the wall. It weighs 140 pounds. That's going to take all 10,000 watts of incoming DC current and convert it into AC current it's going to then be wired into this circuit panel right here, and it's probably gonna take up one or two of these bottom positions. Now, what are we gonna put in all the others? I'll tell you, a lot of stuff. First of all, in this garage, on the roof, they're gonna be like 10 different eight foot long fluorescent lights. So this place, if we turn it all on, is gonna be lit, I mean like daylight. That's important for me when I'm working in the garage, but we don't always want all the lights on, so we're gonna put them, we're gonna install them so that I can flip on half the lights with one switch and half the lights with a different switch. So most of the time we'd only use half the lighting in here under normal circumstances. Now along this wall right here, behind the two car section of the garage, there are actually two 220 volt outlets that's so that we can put electric car chargers right here on the wall. So we could pull in a pair of those things, plug them in overnight, and charge. We don't have any yet, but we're thinking about ahead, you know, in the future. Come on over this way. 
This area back in the corner is going to be basically the workshop. So you'll see me doing other projects later, and we got a lot of fun stuff going on here. First of all, you'll notice there are a lot of uh, little boxes marked as welder. There's a welder there. There's going to be a welder right here. These are 220 outlets. Over here, this is going to be a 220 outlet for a gigantic air compressor. Okay, you see air compressor right there. This, this box and this box are going to be four-way electrical outlets, so there's eight different plugs here. I'll also put a big power strip in, but each one of these is getting their own circuit over there in the panel, so I can plug a lot of stuff. And then this is another 220 outlet for a grinder. Back in this little corner here, I'll be parking my motorcycle, because you know I love my motorcycles. And then out this door, there will be another driveway. So. Uh, it'll, it'll start back here at the fence when all this stuff is cleaned up. It, this will all be uh, concrete, so we could park multiple vehicles back here. Um, and there will be lighting up in the corner that will illuminate this whole area after dark. So, uh, we're almost through with the garage. There's one or two other little things that are interesting to note. We do have a pool out back, and it just so happens that our pool equipment is located right here. Well, before we had this garage expansion, there was nothing near it, and so the pool equipment was being fed by power that came from another part of the house over to this area. Instead, because the house is gonna be right nearby it, we're rerouting the electrical to come right off the wall here so that it's much easier to service in the long run. So if you guys are thinking about big remodeling projects, be thinking about that because little things like rerouting power, they don't cost much when you're in the middle of a big project. Okay, so let's do the next thing. We're gonna get up on the roof and I'm gonna show you some fun stuff up there, give you the update on the solar project, and then we're gonna climb down in the attic and show you that, be right back. Okay, we're coming up on the roof, guys. And uh, before we get started, you know what? I wanted to talk to you for a minute about something I've been watching on Netflix. Really stupid. I don't like it at all. Actually, that's not true. Hemlock Grove. Have you heard about the new Hemlock Grove series that they launched on Netflix? It's one of the Netflix originals. You know, I told you guys about House of, Car of Cards, and when they launched that one with Kevin Spacey, I love that show. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to see it. But this Hemlock Grove one, you know, I love shows like Supernatural and things that have vampires and werewolves, and I thought this was gonna be good. I'm not getting into it. How about you guys? Have you checked it out yet? If you haven't checked it out yet, head over to netflix.com forward slash geekbeat and you get a free 30 day trial. Take a look at it. Definitely watch Supernatural, definitely watch House of Cards, but take a look at this Hemlock Grove thing, see if you get into it. And if any of you are really enjoying it, I'm on like episode, I've finished episode two. I can't even go any further unless you tell me it's really worth it. So if so, tweet me at John Pose and let me know. And that's all I have to say about that. So let's get back to the project. First of all, did you notice I came up through my own roof hatch? How cool is that, huh? So we have a totally flat roof, as you can see. This is very unusual. It's, it's even unusual in this neighborhood. Uh, but this is where the entire solar installation is going to go. So what I want you to imagine is 39 solar panels mounted all over this roof. They're going to start at about this point right here, go all the way over here across the roof to about here. That's one row, and there's going to be five rows of them. So we're talking about a lot of solar panels, okay? Now, here's what's happened. We've had the city come out. They've, we've had uh, people come and inspect the roof to make sure it's strong enough to uh, bear the weight of the load, and that all checks out. We've had the electrical uh, contractors do their thing. All the approvals are done. The materials are ordered. Everything's ready to go. And then we ran into a glitch. Come over this way. So remember, we're doing two projects at once. We're expanding the garage and we're putting a big solar panel on the roof. When we expanded the garage, we had to have the roof line expanded as well. Now, I want you to just see the difference between the new roof, which is this gray, light gray, beautiful kind of smooth thing, 
and then look at the old roof, which is this white, kind of bumpy, nasty thing. Well, our roofing contractor said he was worried about this roof. He said it's okay now, but he doubts it'll last more than five to seven years. Remember, the solar installation we're going to put on here is good for at least 25 years. So guess what? I can't put a 25-year solar panel on a roof that we don't expect to last for sure even 10 years. So that's going to throw a little kink in the uh, whole thing. So right now, we've got our roofing guy who did that section of the roof getting us a bid to redo the entire roof. So here is my first biggest lesson for you guys if you're actually considering doing a solar implementation make sure you've basically got a new roof. So if you're buying a new house, that's the perfect time to put solar on. Or if you just had some kind of big event where you had you know, you know, a windfall because your roof got damaged and they're gonna put a new roof on it, that's the time. Otherwise, you may have a mismatch between how long your roof's gonna last and how long the solar's gonna last. And if you pay the money to mount the solar on the roof and then have to redo it, wow, it's gonna be a problem. So. That's, that's one thing. So what I'm hoping is, I'm hoping that within the next two weeks, we're gonna basically get this thing quoted, it'll be reasonable, we're gonna put a whole new roof on the house and stop worrying about it. That's where we're at with that. And then Dave and I will come back up here and when the installation is going on, we'll film some of that. So Dave, come over this way, you're gonna have to climb down and not die on the roof here because not only do we have that one hatch over there, we have another hatch. That was one of the things I wanted to make sure of was, since we have a flat roof and you can walk around on it, we might as well be able to get up and down on it easily. So we, we added these industrial hatches. This is the same thing if you're in a building and you have a big flat roof up on your building, commercial building, this is a commercial grade hatch. We put two of them. In case you're wondering, these cost about 1500 bucks a piece to get them installed. But this is the new attic over the garage, so I want to show you down here what we've got because it's pretty cool. Okay, welcome to my little attic. Isn't this awesome? So here's the thing. I know that it's not really tall, but that's not important. What's important is I just wanted to have a lot of open space for storing pretty much anything. So this floor we're on is really solid. Um, it's just four by eight sheets everywhere over big two by eight beams so i could put a lot of weight up here there's no problem with that now we came down through the roof because this is not installed yet but you can see there's a big hole here this is going to be for the pull down stairs so when i'm down in the garage i'll pull the stairs down come right up here and i've got all this storage space we've got a little ladder that leads right up to the hatch so i can easily get up on the roof and then as you can see there's an opening here and I can go way, way back here and just fill this big area. Nothing in here but, you know, boxes or whatever I need to put. Now, one other cool little piece that I don't think I mentioned before is this. Look down here, Dave. There's a big 24-inch hole here. The reason why is we're putting an attic fan here in the garage. Now, it'll be operated from a light switch down below, and the reason why is when I'm working on projects down there, if I'm welding, let's say, and there are fumes or there's a lot of dust, I can flip that little fan on and it's gonna suck the air up through here and out through the vents that'll be on the outside of the house right down here. So that open area, it'll be covered with vents, but it'll still be able to flow the air through. So that'll help with ventilation. It'll also help with cooling, Just trying to keep the garage at a level that we want to work at. So those are all the updates today, guys. I'll tell you what, if you have any really awesome ideas that I can add to the project, please let me know. Send them to me on Twitter, send them to me on Google+, email them, whatever. Yeah, now's the time. <laughs> now is the time. We are heavy in the middle of this. So if you've got awesome ideas for things I should do in the garage, tell me. Oh, I did forget one other thing, Dave. Yeah. Downstairs in the man corner, where I'm putting my workbench. The urinal. <laughs> no, I didn't put a urinal down there. But we also have coax and ethernet going into the corner so I can put a big TV out there while I'm working. And there's gonna be um, audio system installed 
so that we will have Sonos throughout the garage. So, can't forget the Sonos. All right, other ideas, you guys, feed them to me. Now's the time. Give you more updates later. We'll see you soon. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. YouTube.com forward slash TV. I'm out of here.